So we just started looking at solving non-right triangles. We've looked at the law of signs to help us to solve um, for a triangle or information when the triangle is not right. Um, it's wrong. Anyways, um, so law of cosines is another way for us to solve for sides and angles of a non-right triangle. Law of sines, we call, we did it when we knew an angle and a side across from that angle. Law of cosines we're gonna do when we're given a side and actually two sides and this angle that is sandwiched in between those two sides. And so it really depends on which sides that we have. But if we wanted to figure out what side A is, the formula says that A squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other sides. So B squared plus C squared minus two times B times C cosine of the angle opposite of A, so that would be capital A. We can do that with the other sides. So if we were trying to find side B, we would say B squared is equal to squaring and summing the other sides. So A squared plus C squared minus two A times C cosine of the angle B. And then the last one, c squared, it is equal to the other sides squared and summing them. So a squared plus b squared minus two times those other sides. So a, b, cosine of the side that we're trying to find, capital C. I guess we could be trying to find the angles um, and we could use this. If we know an angle and a side across, we would probably want to go and use law of sines instead of law of cosines. Law of cosines, when we're dealing with this, notice what we're only given one angle. Before, when we were given one angle and we knew the side opposite, we had the, op or there was a chance that there was no triangle that exists, one triangle or two triangles. For this law of cosines, we don't have to worry about that. So let's look at an example of using this law of cosines. So the example in front of us, not to scale, but um, we have that upper angle of that triangle is 95 degrees and the sides sandwiching the 95 degree angle is two and three. I call it A equals two and B equals three. And so recall the angle, um, the, is a capital letter and the lowercase letter is the side across from it. So let's look at this. We can find what side C is by using that law of cosines. And so we know that C squared, this is equal to A squared, which is two squared plus B squared, which is three squared minus two times a, which is two, times c, which is three, cosine of the angle across, or in, I'm sorry, in between, across was for sines of 95 degrees. And so we get c squared equals four plus nine, which is 13, minus two times two, which is four times three is 12, cosine of 95 degrees. So this is C squared. We want what C is. C is the length of the triangle, so it's positive. So take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 13 minus 12 cosine of 95 degrees. So we want to just plug this into the calculator. This wasn't an angle that we know. And um, simplify this. So when you're using calculator, make sure that your calculator is in degrees. And we get that C is approximately the square root. So plugging in 13 minus 12 cosine of 95, you get approximately 14.046. I'm going to not round it until I take the square root in my calculator. So we get C is approximately 
3.75. So just see how far they want you to round. So now we know what C is. C is approximately 3.75. And so we can find our other two angles. So let's find one of the angles. And since we now know a si uh, angle and the side that is across from that, we can use law of sines. And so recall when we wanted to find the angle, we put the sine in the numerator when we used law of sines. So we have sine of 95 degrees all over the opposite side, 3.75 was equal to, let's do sine of A, all over side A, which was two. So we can get sine A by itself by multiplying both sides by two. And then, so we get sine A equals two sine of 95 degrees, all over 3.75. And then we can take the sine inverse of both sides. So sine inverse of sine A is just A equals sine inverse of this two sine of 95 degrees all over 3.75. So I'll plug in that in really quickly. Again, make sure that you're in um, degrees. Your calculator might put an open parentheses while you're putting in the degree. Make sure you close that before you put the division sign if you type it all in at once. Okay. So sine inverse of 2 sine 95 degrees all over 3.75. So this is approximately 32.1. So now we know what side C is, angle A. We were given what angle C was. And so now we can figure out what angle B is. We can use the law of sines, or we know that the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So taking that 180 degrees minus the sum of the two angles that we know, which was 95 degrees, and 32.1 degrees. So we have 180 degrees minus that sum, 95, plus the 32.1 is approximately a 127.1. Subtracting that from 180, we get that B it is equal to approximately 52.9 degrees. OK, so there was a case where we were given the angle in between two sides that we knew. And then we use law of cosines, law of sines, and other information about triangles to help us figure out and complete that triangle. So let's look at a case where now we're just given all three sides and we wanna figure out what the angles are. And we're given that it's not a right triangle. So looking at this example, we're given all three sides, but we don't know any of the angles. And so the lower left-hand angle is B, the a lower right hand angle is A, and then the angle above is C. And so we want to look at finding one of these angles. So just choose which one, it doesn't matter. So let's say that we wanted to find angle C. So using the law of cosines, we know that um, C squared, so in our case, this would be 4 squared, which is the side, is equal to the other angle squared, so or not angle, side squared, so 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times those other sides, so 8 times 5 
cosine of the angle that we're trying to find. In this case, we chose C. So now we can just simplify this, isolate our cosine C on one side of the equation and take the cosine inverse of both sides. So simplifying, we have 14 squared. We have six, that 16 is equal to 8 squared, which is 64, plus 5 squared is 25, minus 2 times 8 times 5. Uh, no, 8 times 5 is 40, and 40 times 2 is 80, cosine of C. So summing 65 and 25, that is 90, minus 80 cosine C. So let's subtract 90 on both sides. So that's going to be negative um, 74 is equal to negative 80 cosine of C. So dividing both sides by negative 80 gives us cosine C. So cosine C is equal to 74, two negatives, make a positive. So 74 over 80. I could reduce this, but it's not going to help me figure out what C is. Um, so let's just not worry about that. Let's take the cosine inverse of both sides of our equation to get our angle. So we have cosine inverse both sides of cosine C is equal to cosine inverse of 74 over 80. So we get C is equal to cosine inverse of that 74 over 80. So make sure that we're in degrees. Cosine And 74 divided by 80. So we get C here is approximately 22.3. So now we know what C is. Twenty two point three degrees. So because we know a side and an angle across from it, we can find one of the other angles, A or B, by using the law of sines. And so let's use law of sines. So I know that sine of, let's find angle B. So sine of angle B all over the side across from B, which would be 5 is equal to sine of the angle I know, which is 22.3. I just found all over the side across from it, which is C, which is four. So let's get sine B by itself by multiplying both sides by five. So sine B, is equal to five times sine of 22.3 degrees all over four. And we can take again the sine inverse of both sides to get the angle by itself. So B is equal to sine inverse of this five times sine of 22.3 degrees all over four. So plugging that in, sine inverse, five times sine 22.3 in parentheses divide by four in parentheses, we get approximately 28.3 degrees. And so now we know two of the angles. I think it's easiest if we just use 180 minus the sum of those two angles. So 180 degrees minus, this would be angle A. Angle A is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of 22.3 degrees plus 28.3 degrees. So 
So 22.3 plus 28.3 gives us 50.6. Which is a hundred and yeah, let me just it's a little early in the morning. Um, and I have the calculator right here, 129.4 degrees. So given the three sides of the triangle, we were able to find the three angles. So the only time we have to worry about two triangles existing or one triangle existing again is if we are just given one angle and the side across from that one angle and another side. So when we have to use law of cosines to start finding, then we don't have to worry about there being another triangle existing. So let's actually, um, look at some applications of using law of cosines and law of sines to help us solve the information. So looking at the example in front of us, it says in attempting to fly from Chicago to Louisville, a distance of 330 miles, a pilot inadvertently took a course that was 10 degrees in error. If the craft maintains an average of 220 miles per hour, and if the error is detected, or um, error in direction is discovered after 15 minutes, through what angle should the pilot turn to head towards Louisville? Okay, so let's look at that first, and then we'll look at part A or part B, which says what um, new average speed should the pilot maintain so that the total time of the trip is 90 minutes. So we want to find figure out what this angle is here, and there's a picture given of Chicago, a line joining Chicago to Louisville, which is 330 degrees, and an angle between that and a line where we went of 10 degrees. And we want to figure out what this angle is. So a couple things we can do. We can figure out, first of all, what our distance is that we traveled. We know that we were going here 220 miles per hour, and we discovered in 15 minutes that we made an error. So we know that distance is equal to rate times time. The problem is that our time is not the same units. We're going 220 miles per hour and we have 15 minutes. So we wanna convert, um, let's convert this 15 minutes to hours. So 15 minutes. Well, I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. I want my minutes to cancel. So I'm gonna put that in the denominator. And so 15 over 60, well, 15 goes into 60 four times. And so this is a quarter of an hour. Or I can write it as 0 0.25 hours. So let's figure out that distance. We know that the distance is equal to the speed, which we were given 220 miles per hour, times our rate, which we just found was, or um, time, which we just found was 0 0.25 hours. And so looking at 220 times 0.25, we get 55. So we've traveled 55 miles. The pilot did before they discovered their error. So we have an angle in between two known sides. And so we could figure out what this side is across from us. And that would give us then how far we were gonna to have to travel, but then we can also then figure out what the, our angle is. So let's do that first. So let's figure out what the distance from where we determined the error and how far Louisville is from that point. 
So let's maybe call this x. So we know that x squared is equal to squaring and then summing the distance of each um, side of the triangle. So 330 squared plus 55 squared minus 2 times the other sides. So 30, 330 and 55 cosine and the angle across from what we're trying to find, which was 10 degrees. So we know we're going to have to take the square root of this. Let's just throw this in. So we have 330 squared plus 55 squared minus 2 times 55 times 330 cosine, make sure you're in terms of a degrees, of 10 degrees. So this is approximately x is equal to the square root of 76,176.5. I'm not going to round when I take the square root of this because it's in my calculator. And it will be giving you a more accurate answer. So square root of that answer is approximately 276 miles. Okay, so now we know a side and an angle across from that side. So we can figure out this angle in here. Maybe let's call it angle A. Just because theta is over there. So let's use law of sines. So I know that sine of angle A all over side across from A, which is 330 miles, is equal to sine of an angle I know, which is 10 degrees, and the side across from it, which we found was 276. Multiply both sides by 330 degrees, not 330 degrees, 330. So 330 sine of 10 degrees all over 276. And now we can take the sine inverse of both sides. So sine inverse, the argument is 330 sine of 10 degrees. That whole thing is over 276. So this will give us that angle A, which is inside the triangle. And we want the angle outside of that triangle, which forms a horizontal line. So sine inverse. 330 times sine, again, make sure you're in degrees of 10, divided by 276. Text there. So we get that as approximately 12 degrees. Okay, so the pilot is going to need to make 180 degrees minus this 12 degrees in here. So the pilot should change your course. to a um, angle of elevation of 
180 degrees minus 12. That's what we need to do. So 180 degrees minus 12 degrees, that is going to give us 168 degrees. Sixty-eight degrees. Okay, so we knew now um, what the angle the pilot should turn to head towards Louisville. That was part A. So that was all solving part A. Solving part B, we've done some of the work already said, what is the new average speed the pilot should maintain so that the total time of the trip is 90 minutes? Well, we've already traveled for 15 minutes. And so we want the total time of the trip to be nine uh, or this next piece of the leg of our trip to be 90 minus 15. So 90 minus 15, that gives me 75 minutes. So we know how the distance, we know that distance again equals rate times time. We need to convert our minutes in terms of hours. So this is one hour, 15 minutes, and we just found that 15 minutes was 0 0.25 hours. So this is our time right now left is one hour, 1.25 hours. And the distance we had left, we found was 276. So 276 miles is equal to the rate, which we're trying to find, times the time, which is 1.25 hours. So if we divide both sides by 1.25, the rate 276 over 1.25. That gives us the speed that we need to be going to have our flight only be an hour and a half is 220.8 miles per hour. Okay, so we were able to answer what the degree was they needed to change their course to get to the correct city and how fast they needed to go in order for the trip to be 90 minutes long. So the next example in front of us says an airplane A is flying directly towards the airport, which is 20 miles away. The pilot notices um, airplane B 45 degrees to her right. Airplane B is also flying directly towards the airport. The pilot of airplane B calculates that the airplane A is 50 degrees to his left. Based on that information, how far is airplane B from the airport? Okay, so a lot going on here. And so sometimes just making our picture um, and drawing, this is helpful. And so again, so airplane A is flying directly towards an airport, which is 20 miles away. Okay, so we got some airplane A here. They're looking at going to an airport. And that airport, it tells me, is 20 miles away. The pilot notices the airplane B 45 degrees to her right. Okay, so if I'm flying here, this direction, to my right, I'm going to go 45 degrees. Okay. 
Okay, so this would be airplane B. Airplane B is also flying directly towards the airport. The pilot of the airplane calculates that airplane A is 50 degrees to his left. So he is flying towards this airport and going this direction to his left, this is 50 degrees. And so now, based off this information, how far is airplane B to the airport? So we want to find this distance in here. So looking at this problem, um, this actually is using the law of signs. I have an angle and I have a um, a side across from it. So across from angle 50, I have side, which is 20. And I have angle 45. I'm trying to find the side across from the angle 45. And so I can set this up as X all over sine of the angle, which is 45 degrees, is equal to, I know, 20. That side is across from angle of 50 degrees, so sine of 50 degrees. So multiplying both sides by sine of 45 degrees, which you should know what that is. So let's just do that without plugging in the calculator. So that's root two over two. So let's multiply both sides by that root two all over two. And so doing that, we get X by itself. Two would cancel with our 20, 10 times. So we have 10 all root two all over sine of 50 degrees. So plugging that in, we have 10 square root two. Oops. Divide by sine of 50 degrees. So that is approximately 8.5 miles away. To the airport. And that's plane B. So that one technically was not a law of cosines. So I just pulled it. So that was um, not a law of cosines. I pulled up some applications that had both, and that just happened just to be a law of signs. So looking at one more example, we had a ship leave support at 1 p.m. traveling north at a speed of 30 miles per hour. At 3 p.m., the ship adjusts the course on a bearing of north 20 degrees east. How far is the ship from the port at 4 p.m.? round to the nearest unit. Okay, so again, let's draw a picture. A ship leaves a port at 1 p.m. traveling north at a speed of 30 miles per hour. Okay, so we have a, a ship, they're traveling towards the north. And then at 3 p.m. they adjust their course. So let's figure out how far they travel to going north. We know that they're going 30 miles per hour. And we started at 1 p.m. 
and we're changing our course at 3 p.m. So we know that the time that they traveled was two hours. And so distance equals rate times time. And so we have the distance of going to be 30 miles per hour. So 30 times the time of two. So we know that the distance they traveled was 60 miles going north. And so at that point, they're going to change the course and they're going north 20 degrees east. So this is where I kind of like to draw my compass. I have north here and I'm going to go towards the east. So starting at the north line, going towards the east, we're going 20 degrees. Twenty degrees here, and we want to know um, how far is the ship from the port at four p.m. So let's figure out how far the ship has traveled. We're assuming that they're still going thirty miles per hour. From three p.m. to four p.m. is one hour, so this distance is thirty times one, which is thirty miles. So not quite to scale. I guess I can move this down a little. And so we want to know how far from this point is it back to the point where they started. So maybe let's call this X. So we need to figure out, we can figure out the angle in between in that triangle. We know that we have 20 degrees to from the north to this line right here. And so inside we have to the um, horizontal line. Well, we know that, that from the north to that horizontal line on the east is 90. So 20 degrees um, subtracted from 90 is 70 degrees. So we know right in here, this piece in here is 70 degrees. And then I want to get to the, horiz um, to the vertical line from the east to the south. I know that this in here is 90 degrees. So inside that triangle, that angle is 70 degrees plus 90 degrees. So this angle in here, the whole angle in between the two known sides is 160 degrees. Just kind of making my triangle again without all of that stuff in there. We know that this angle in here is 160 degrees. We said that this was 60 miles and this was 30 miles. And we want to find out what X is. So we can use the law of cosines. We know that X squared is equal to squaring the sides, uh, sandwiching the angle we know, so 30 squared plus 60 squared minus two times each of those sides. So 30 times 60 cosine and the angle in between, which is 160 degrees. So X squared equals nine, um, 30 times 30. So that is 900 plus 60 times 60. So that's 3,600 minus two times 30, that's 60. So 60 times 60, that's 3,600, cosine of 160 degrees. So 90 plus, or 900 plus 
3,600, that's 4,500 minus 3,600 cosine of 160. So let's take the square root of both sides. So X is approximately, and they wanted me to round to the nearest unit. And so distance, this is going to be miles. So we're going to round to the whole number. So we have the square root, 1,500. Minus 3,600 cosine of 160. So this is 88.7. So rounding it to the nearest unit, we have that is approximately 89 miles. Okay. Okay, so questions on that? 